In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of ordinary differential equations. So if you recall, we were talking about different solution methods for initial value problems. And in this video, we're going to focus on the backward or implicit Euler method. So consider the initial value problem shown here dx dt is equal to some function of x and t. If we assume that the value of the dependent variable x, so xi, is known at an initial value ti, then we can use a Taylor approximation to relate the value of x at t is equal to ti plus 1, which is denoted x at ti plus 1, with where the step size here is ti plus 1 minus ti. However, unlike the explicit Euler method, for the backward or implicit Euler method, we will use the Taylor series around the point x at ti plus 1. So we're going to estimate, or we can, we can estimate our, our value xi using a Taylor expansion around the point ti plus 1. So xi is equal to x at ti plus 1 plus dx dt evaluated at ti plus 1 times h plus my error terms of order h squared. So recall for the explicit Euler method where we had, um, we were uh, expanding, um, doing the Taylor approximation of x at ti plus 1 about the point ti. So we had here xi and then dx dt evaluated at ti times h and then of course our, again our um, error term of order h squared. So this, again, just writing our estimate here. We can substitute our differential equation into this, which yields the equation shown here. So xi is equal to x ti plus 1 plus f evaluated at xi plus 1 and ti plus 1 times h plus order h squared. So therefore, um, as an approximation, an estimate for x at ti plus 1, which we can denote x at i plus 1, is as shown here. So x at i plus 1 is equal to x at i plus f evaluated at xi plus 1 and ti plus 1 times h. So the difference here with, with the implicit or backward Euler method is that we're evaluating our function or our, our slope at um, the point that we don't know yet, so at xi plus 1 and ti plus 1, where in the uh, explicit Euler method we were evaluating this at x at i and t at i. So using this estimate, the local truncation error is proportional to the square of the step size, so it's order h squared. Um, and again, the constant of proportionality for the truncation error is related to the second derivative of x, or the first derivative of the uh, initial value problem. So our local error is order h squared. And if the errors from each interval are added together, then um, the total error is order h. So same as the, uh, the explicit Euler method. So let's uh, take a look graphically at what we're doing here. So um, at some value ti, uh, we're given an initial, um, the initial value of our function xi, and we want to see what happens um, as time marches forward, so as t increases. So um, we can, at, at t of xi plus, or at ti plus 1, we can find the slope, which is the slope shown here, and then use that slope to, to help us um, move from where, our current, where we currently are to our next estimate. So evaluating this dx dt at xi plus 1 and ti plus 1, where our h here um, is equal to ti plus 1 minus ti. So we have to find the slope at this value that we don't know the, the x value yet, um, but we put that estimate in to help us move forward from our current uh, time step. And then this gives us our next estimate, so xi plus 1, and the difference between these, the um, actual value and the predicted value 
is e, uh, the, the error, which is ei plus 1. And um, you can notice that the equations can become nonlinear here when f is a nonlinear function of xi plus 1. And we will see that in some of the examples as we go forward. So this method is called implicit because it uses information um, that we don't have yet. So it needs we need to, to write the, the function as, um, or, or evaluate this at xi plus 1, but we don't know xi plus 1 yet. So we'll see kind of how that um, works in a few examples. So as I said, the backward Euler method is termed implicit because it uses the slope dx dt, which is f of x and t, at the unknown point xi plus 1. So basically we're evaluating our function f at xi plus 1 and ti plus 1 which is in contrast to the explicit Euler method, which is, of course, an explicit method where we were evaluating our, our slope or our function at um, points that we already knew all of the information about. So we were evaluating this f at xi and ti. So um, with this implicit method, uh, the developed equation can end up being nonlinear in xi plus 1, and it can also be linear in, in xi plus 1, so it, we can have both things occur. So nonlinear equations can often be solved using either the fixed point iteration method or the newton raphson method or some root finding method to find the value of xi plus 1. So um, the implicit method does not provide better accuracy than the explicit scheme for the Euler method. We, we found that they were both um, had an accuracy of order h. It does come with additional computation. So having to use a potentially um, a, a nonlinear um, a root finding method to, to solve this nonlinear equation at every time step increases our co uh, the computational complexity of implicit methods. But the advantage of implicit methods is that they're always unconditionally stable. Um, and so we saw with the explicit Euler method well, how it can become unstable in some situations uh, for various um, choices of the time step h, where the implicit Euler method is always stable regardless of the um, value of h that you choose. Now stability is not the same as accuracy, so it does not mean that it does always uh, provide an accurate solution, but it, it, uh, it does not suffer from numerical instability, so the, the solution does not um, blow up or grow um, uncontrollably, like it, which can happen with the explicit Euler method. And we'll see that in an example here. So first let's look at a uh, repeating example 12.1 using the implicit Euler method. So example 12.1, we were talking about population growth. So um, recall so th that the example was that, assume the Canadian population at given at time equals zero, which is our current year, is 35 million. And we, we're going to look at two different um, birth rates, 2.5% and 6%, and um, in both cases look at a, a death rate of 1% to estimate what is the population going to be in 50 years. So for the 2.5% birth rate, we end up with um, this value, this uh, constant of proportionality of k is 0 0.015, and our initial value problem is given as shown here. So dx dt is equal to 0 0.015x, which means that the population grows, has a net increase of 1.5% per year. So let's take h is equal to 1, um, and then we can estimate um, x at each time going forward. So x at i plus 1 is equal to xi plus h, times dx dt, and now we're going to evaluate this dx dt at xi plus 1 and ti plus 1, because we're going to use the implicit Euler method. So um, this means that xi plus 1 is equal to xi plus h times 0 0.015 xi plus 1. So then we can rearrange this expression to um, get a, an explicit, or to get an expression for our estimated xi plus 1. So xi plus 1 is equal to xi divided by 1 minus 0 0.015. So um, plugging in our initial values, t is equal to 0 and x naught is equal to 35 million, then we can find um, the estimate at t equals 1 year, 
So x1 is equal to x0 over 1 minus 0 0.015. So plugging in 35 for our, our initial value x0, we get that x1 is equal to 30.5.533. And then we can do this at two years. So the value of x2 is equal to x1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.015. So plugging in our value for x1, we get that x2 is equal to 36.074. And we can continue on um, to find the values of x at each of the time points. So this is the MATLAB output for times going from 1 to 50. Um, and you can see that at um, 50 years, the, the population is estimated to be 74.5 million. And this uh, plot here shows the exact solution um, plotted against the implicit Euler with an H of one year. Um, with this uh, growth rate, the implicit method provides an error similar to that of the explicit method. So this was our exact result minus our approximate result at 50 years gives us an error of negative 0.4 and a relative error of negative 0 0.005 in this case, which are both um, very similar to the explicit method, if you recall those results. With the little bit higher growth rate, um, with k is equal to 0 0.05, the initial value problem is dx dt is equal to 0 0.05x. So again, we'll take a value of h is equal to 1 and calculate our estimate for xi plus 1 based on our x estimated xi. So xi plus 1 is equal to xi plus h times dx dt. And again, we're evaluating this dx dt at um, xi plus 1 and ti plus 1. So this is equal to um, x1 or xi plus h times 0 0.05 times xi plus 1. So we rearrange and we get that xi plus 1 is equal to xi divided by 1 minus 0 0.05. So again, with uh, t naught equals 0 and x naught equals 35, uh, we can estimate that t1 is equal to uh, x naught divided by 0 0.05, which is 35 divided by 1 minus 0 0.05, which is 36.842. And at two years, um, again, x2 is equal to x1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.05. We plug in our value for x1. And we see that x2 is equal to 38.781. And continuing on, we can find the values at x for each time point. And this is the result um, from MATLAB. And so at 50 years, we get an estimate of the population at 454 uh, million. And this um, plot shows the comparison of the exact solution with the implicit Euler with h is equal to 1. So again, the implicit method provides an error very similar to that of the explicit method. So at t equals 50, we have our exact solution minus our approximation, uh, which is equal to an error of negative 28.48. And the relative error in this case is negative 0.07 which are both very similar to what we got for the uh, explicit method. So comparing the implicit and explicit Euler results um, for the two different growth rates, so, so the figure here on the left shows the growth at, with the 2.5% birth rate, and the blue line shows the implicit Euler, and the uh, orange line shows the explicit Euler with the black line in between showing the exact solution. So with this birth rate, they both provide a very um, good approximation, and you can see that um, that, uh, that that they're both very close to the exact solution. For the six percent birth rate, um, again, they they provide an, oh, a decent approximation, which is um, not as good as with the lower lower birth rate, uh, but they both provide a very similar uh, error. Where um, it, for this example, the implicit Euler over predicts the population, while the explicit Euler under predicts the population. Um, and that trend is not universal for these two, for these methods, but um, that just occurs with uh, this particular function here. But you can see that the kind of the amount that the error is quite similar. So the amount that the um, implicit Euler 
over predicts is very similar to the amount that the explicit Euler under predicts at each time step. Um, and similar with the um, explicit Euler method here, we can decrease the step size to provide a better approximation. So this shows the results with h is equal to 0.1, and you can see that we get very close to the exact solution here. Um, or this shows the results with h is equal to 3, and you can see that we get a worse estimate here. And you can also see that as t increases um, in, in all of these um, cases, the error it tends to get worse for, um, for this particular function. Okay, let's take a look at the other example that we did um, where we were considering the lake with the concentrations of a particular pollutant. So um, if you recall the, um, the problem, you can go through and, and read that again. Um, so we wanted to find the concentration of the particular pollutant in the lake after two years. So for, the, for this problem, the, the differential equation had the form shown here. So dc by dt was given by this function of both time and c, where c is the concentration of the pollutant in the lake. So if we take h is equal to one day, ci plus one can be predicted for a given value of ci using the implicit Euler method as ci plus 1 is equal to ci plus h times dc by dt evaluated at c at i plus 1 and t at i plus 1. So we can plug those in here and we can actually rearrange this and get um, an explicit uh, function for c at i plus 1 as shown here. So we're, where everything now on the right hand side is things that we would know. So we would know c at i and we would um, know all of our times t at i plus 1. It can be known. So with t not equals 0 and c not equals 5, c1 is calculated um, using that expression as, as shown here. So plugging in um, our values and h was 1 if you remember. So c1 is equal to 4.999. So proceeding iteratively um, produces results almost identical to those of the explicit Euler method. And at t equals 730 days, which was two years, the concentration in the lake was estimated to be 1.4242 parts per billion. And this is the MATLAB uh, output that is produced with the um, pollutant in the lake over time, as well as all the, the values for the various uh, time steps. And this is very similar to what we found for the explicit Euler method. Okay, let's look at another example. Here we want to, um, if you recall from the previous section, section with the explicit Euler method, when we considered this particular uh, differential equation, we saw um, that a particular uh, choice of step size h, the, the method became unstable. Um, so here we're going to use the implicit Euler method to show that uh, the implicit method is always stable. So the implicit method here is, is called unconditionally stable. So again, uh, the initial value problem that we're considering is dx dt is equal to minus x. And we want to compare two solutions with a step size of 0.1 and a step size of 3 with x naught is equal to 1. So using the implicit Euler scheme, the value of x i plus 1 can be obtained as shown here. So x i is equal, or x i plus 1 is equal to x i minus h x i plus 1, which we can rearrange to say that x i plus 1 is equal to x i divided by 1 plus h. And um, if we go back another step, we can also relate this xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus 1 divided by 1 plus h times 1 plus h. So this means that any xi plus 1 is, can be related to the initial value x0 divided by 1 plus h to the power of i plus 1, where h is a positive number as the, the step size. So with this um, expression, uh, the, the term um, 1 over 1 plus h to the power i plus 1 is bounded for every i, so that means that xi plus 1 is bounded. 
So we can compare um, values h is equal to 0.1 and h is equal to, to 3. And um, so here h is equal to 0 0.1 and here h is equal to 3. And you can see that while the accuracy is lost with higher values of h, the solution maintains numerical stability. Um, so if you recall with the explicit method, um, when we had this higher h, the solution began to oscillate wildly and essentially uh, blow up for, for bigger values of t, um, where that does not happen with the implicit method. So that's the advantage of the um, stability of this approach. So let's look at another um, example. Here we're going to consider a nonlinear initial value problem. So dx dt is equal to t x squared plus 2x with an initial condition that x of 0 is equal to minus 5. We want to find the values of x for t between 0 and 5 with h is 0 0.1 using the implicit Euler method. So the exact solution of this differential equation is given um, here. So x is equal to minus 20 e to the power 2t divided by 9 minus 5 e to the power 2t plus 10 e to the power 2t times t. So the implicit Euler scheme provides the, the estimate for xi plus 1 using the um, implicit Euler implementation. And again, we're evaluating this dx dt at xi plus 1 and ti plus 1. So we can plug this into our original um, ODE which again was t x squared plus 2x. And now um, x i plus 1 appears on both sides of the equation, as it has in the past, uh, but this equation is nonlinear in x i plus 1. So we can't just rearrange to get um, an explicit function for x i plus 1. So this means that a method such as the newton raphson method um, or another root finding algorithm must be used at each time increment to find the value of x i plus 1. So this is why um, the, these implicit methods tend to have higher computational cost. Um, but as we saw in the previous example, that comes at the um, with the advantage of, of uh, numerical stability. So we'll see how, how we proceed here. So um, with our initial condition, x not equals five minus five, h is equal to 0 0.1, t not equals zero, and t one is equal to 0 0.1 we have our estimate for x1, or our equation for x1, as shown here. And then we can use solve this nonlinear equation for x1 using the newton raphson method. So um, in the, so I'd, I'd used just the newton raphson method from uh, code from chapter four um, to solve this. We get that x1 is equal to minus 5.82576. And then again, for t is equal to for t two is equal to zero point two. The equation is shown here, and we can use the newton raphson method um, to find x two, which is negative six point two nine two three five. And then we can proceed iteratively to find the results for uh, up to t is equal to five. So here um, is the MATLAB output for this. Um, so at each of these time steps, um, in the, the example code that is posted online, um, I didn't use the newton raphson method code that I had written, I used the built-in function in MATLAB um, f0, which is essentially the same thing, it's a, new, a root finding um, procedure. So, um, but yes, basically the, the, the point is that you can't, if you can't rearrange the function um, explicitly for your x i plus one, then you have to use one of these um, nonlinear root finding methods at each time step.